Hello again everyone, Age of Dune here, and we're back to the League of Legends shoutcast. Gonna be casting a game that is actually live at the moment of the casting. Went ahead and went to Twitch again, saw who was streaming, and I found that Nian Thonso was streaming. He's not actually got a lot of viewers. I was kind of surprised to see that. I think he was right around 600. And that really surprised me. But he's actually this Nintenpai here. Apparently, it's going to go ahead and kind of branch off a Nintendo's name would be my guess. But he is actually Nian Thonso, and he's going to be against Uzi Pig Deft, which is a combination of three different names from Korea. So, probably is not at all related to any of them. Welcome anyway, we'll see what ends up happening here. Actually, hold on. I actually think he might... He might be Uzi Pig Deft. I'm not sure. I don't remember which one he is. He might be... He might be Lucian. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah. I, I did watch this a little bit, and he was definitely in this area. And there's actually a lot of pings, so somehow the red team kind of knows about it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how. I don't... Well, they couldn't have been picked up on the ward. There we go. The Karthus is actually checking that bush with his cues there. He says, hey! You're there. But, yeah. It's actually Uzi Pig Death here who is Neanthon, so not Nintenpai. It actually probably is Nintenpai, actually. So, yeah. Anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and put everybody in order here. We've got a top Irelia played by Minions has spawned. Isage versus hmm. Looks like it's gonna be Karthus. Okay. Played by who is he? Who may be who he on... Fusion Gaming as well. I'm not altogether certain there, but I think it is. Mid lane, we've... What? What is this game? Alright, mid lane, it looks like we've got LeBlanc. Played by 14H. Ooh, man. Looks like there's a bit of an invasion. Oh, it goes to... It did actually go to Pierce St. Vicious there. And the question is, did he get any XP? I, I don't think you could see XP bars, which is kind of unfortunate. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, you, you can definitely you can definitely see that. So, yeah, it looks like they did not get any XP. There's a little bit of a training going on back here. It's actually support syndrome, which is kind of strange. But Uzi picked up doing a lot of damage there. And he a nice flash into the bush. Not going to be enough, though. Now Janna has to get out of this. She's getting really low. And the question is, does she have the force to flash? There we go. She did have flash. I was about to say, does she have flash? The answer is yes. yes she does. And LeBlanc doing some damage here. Probably call. Which is, I believe, Complexities Prolly. Alright, who is playing the cast in here? <laughs> Shaco comes in just to thwack her a couple times and then walks out of the lane. Good, like, yeah, we're good. Alright, so Uzi picked up, like I said, the Afonso. He's gonna be against Nintenpai, who may or may not be Nintendo, playing the Corky. The mm, sports, oddly, we have Chunky Fresh as Syndra versus Janna, played by Executioner K. And finally, we've got the junglers, Curse Saint Vicious playing Jarvan the Fourth, and Mr. Steal Your Buffs as the Draco. Nice slow there from Aurelia getting her out of this with no problem whatsoever. No problem. Mr. Steal Your Buffs. He's playing a fitting champion for being Mr. Steal Your Buffs. Oddly. Oddly, it looks like Curse Saint Mission actually has not gone for his blue yet. Which means that uh, Shaco actually can go ahead and steal this. I guess he figured it was stolen already? I don't know. But he came in for the gank here on prob probably, uh, probably Call. I'm just going to call him Prolly. He came in for the gank on Prolly. Did not manage to get the kill and uh, actually gave up his blue buff because of it. I don't know why he hasn't done that. I guess because he figured that it was warded so they'd come and kill him or something. But uh, now he just ended up giving it up. Or maybe he thought it was gone? I don't know. Whatever the case may be, though, he didn't go for it. But he does, it looks like he is coming in for another gank here onto Kassadin. Probably is actually playing very cautious. So, he, I, I can't see the gank really doing too much. He's playing way too far back here for any sort of gank to do much at all. Not much going on down in the bot lane. Just, you know, the normal CSing thing. Looks like the... Lucian here, Nianthonso, is actually a little bit ahead in CS because there is a full wave here, almost, and he is still actually tied. So, he's definitely ahead of this Corky in that CS. 
there's a cursed saint vicious going through the jungle trying to go ahead and counter jungle some looks like you got a couple wolves there not too huge but it's always something. Janna just about died. Lots of damage coming in on Lucian there. There's the heal bait though. Down goes the in uh, Nintendo. In comes the Jarman actually getting in there just in time to help with Janna. Wasn't really needed, but honestly, it, it's always a good thing to have. He actually did trigger the buff there on this, so he could have technically taken that out. I guess he figured it really wasn't worth it as it was just like a spawn. But nicely done there by him. Very nice heal bait by the Lucian. Just keeping him in there so they can go ahead and finish him off. And we did just see Aurelia getting engaged on. I doubt she's going to live through this. She actually decided to turret dive. Gets engaged on by Shago. Slows him to try to get out of this. But she's got nothing to jump to. Except for Carthus himself. Which is not going to really go too well. So there we go. She does end up going down. Kill actually goes to Mr. Steal Your Buffs there. Which is always good for him. Not as good for Carthus. Really strange seeing a Carthus top. Preseason meta is all kind of funky. It's all funky. Alright, so it looks like the Jarvan went ahead and went the Ranger's Trailblazer here, which is the one that reduces the cooldown of Smite but makes it do half damage. And then it also does it to all the minions as well as some stuff. So that's kind of cool. And then the Shaco unsurprisingly went for the ganking one. Yeah, that, that doesn't surprise me at all. Casts on enemy champions, and then it does tr reduced true damage and reducing their movement speed. And that, yeah, that, that's pretty much Shaco. So, I, I'm not at all surprised to see him using that one. Nice jump away there by the... By the LeBlanc to get her out of that one. And St. Mishes is back to his jungle. As, as expected. Not really too much going on there. One thing about this jungle item that he does have, of course, because of the fact that it does reduce your cooldown on smite, you actually get the buffs from smiting these monsters a lot more often. So you can actually secure a lot more of those buffs. So that's, that's probably one reason that he went for that. Otherwise, I can't see too much of a reason to go for it. Uh, that, that, that is about the only reason that I can see to have a half cooldown. Oh, man. Looks like Aurelia just kicked Carthus in the butt. Well, I don't know what happened. He is at full health here. Oh, she hit six. Went in, landed this slow, and he actually turned around. He put on Defile, and she actually finishes him off with the ultimate there. Out comes his ult. Really doesn't do much at all. He hit six in the middle of it. I guess he thought he was going to be able to do something. He did do enough damage to the LeBlanc that the cast didn't thought he'd be able to finish her off. It didn't end up working out. But he thought he was going to. Oh, the stun lands on Corky. The slow as well. Lucian jumps in. That's a dead Corky. And then Pi didn't even try to get out of that one. He's like, yep, yeah, I'm gone. And there's nothing I can do about it, so he just couldn't kill me. And they did. They were more than happy to oblige that. So, nicely done there. Blue, blue team's really having a good time this game. And... Not looking good at all for the red team. May turn around later, but honestly, I don't know because, you know, Shaco, not really a great late game. On the other hand, Karthus and Kassadin, both really strong late game. Corky's pretty decent, but you've also got to think, keep in mind, these three, especially these two, these two do tons of magic damage. A lot of his damage is also magic damage. So, if these guys build MR, it's going to kind of shut down a very large part of this team. The only one it wouldn't completely shut down would be Shaco, unless he's building AD Shaco, which would be completely insane. Now he's going AD Shaco. So, they're gonna have a little bit of AD, but honestly not enough. We have a gank coming in here from Shaco now. Nice flash from Cinder, and she puts him back. They're gonna get out of this, and Janna almost died there to the calling. She had to get out, and down comes the LeBlanc as well. Maybe going for the Janna. The red team did go ahead and back off, as I believe they, well, they just kind of figured out, given the fact that the Blanc's not there in mid, probably coming down for a gank. And they were right. They were right. So that back off there was a good call. Shaco going in again, though. Wanted to go for this Lucian. Throws his dagger, but uh, that's about it. That's all he can do, really. Gonna go ahead and head out now. And the question is, will he decide to go for this dragon or anything else? He's gonna go for the little guy. I'm so sorry for that little guy. He didn't even try to attack. It's so sad. Probably was coming down for a gank there. Decided against it, actually going for it. And now that thing is there to go ahead and get that vision of the dragon. And 
Oh man, Cassian is just a lot of damage really fast to LeBlanc there. That's pretty unpleasant there for LeBlanc. She actually built Chalice of Harmony to go ahead and, for one thing, have the MR. Alright, yeah. Have MR and the Mana Region. So, not sure which one she built it for. I'm thinking. That's a strange decision right there. It's a very strange decision. Ends up going down for it too. But, yeah, I'm, guess, I'm thinking she probably did it for the magic uh, mana region. Because that is actually one thing that, watching one of my friends play a block, she needs a lot of mana region. Because she's a really tough guy. She needs that mana region. So, by building this chalice, of course, she does have that mana region. That's going to make her a whole lot better in the lane. Shaco wanting to go for this. He wants this. He wants this so bad. Is he gonna go for it though? I don't know. It looks like in goes the captain, in goes Shaco, and just to steal your buffs actually stole the kill onto the block there. <laughs> yeah, it happens. And I mean it is Shaco. That is kind of one of the things he's well known for getting lots of kills. He's coming in for a gank here on the bot lane. Gets picked up by a ward. Amusingly, that pink ward's still there. Goes in, out comes the Karthus ulti, and they're going in, punted back by Cinder, but she's still gonna go down. Nicely done there by that Shaco. Very good gank, and good reaction by the Janna Corky combo. Just making sure those guys don't get out, because every other time that that gank has happened, those two have managed to get out. This Cinder's really good, just scattering the weak and just shunting them all away. Just keeps them away. Does, makes them do pretty much no damage on most of the gang. This one, one name of the deal. Also, the fact that it was followed through, or preceded by a Karthus ulti, that one helped a lot. Nice wall there. Forced a flash, though, by the fact that the Blanc flashed. So that's a flash for a flash. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. And the ward there, not enough to really do too much, given the fact that he flashed away. So. Nice escape there from Karthus. He's gonna go ahead and go to the jungle now and steal his jungler's creep. Always kind of mean, especially now in the new, the new patch, the new jungle, because you know those buffs they mean a lot to the junglers. They they really mean a lot to the junglers. So when you go ahead and steal them, it, it really hurts them quite a bit. But on the other hand, I don't know that a lot of uh, a lot of people really stack the golems like that. So, it should be okay. Those two just trading like crazy, and every trade LeBlanc comes out behind. She's had a good one. In goes the Cinder, wanted to go for the Janna here. Didn't get the stun on her, and a very nice ulti there by the Janna to disengage that. It's not bad at all. We have another gank coming in here onto the Karthus, but he was able to walk away from it. St. Vicious unfortunately missed his flag and drag, but there we go. They're going for this in comes the Shaco. The Karthus is dead. Flash comes out from Aurelia trying to get out of this. In goes the St. Vicious to go ahead and try to keep the Karthus away, but unfortunately for them, in comes Prolly as well, and he's able to mop that up. We do have a power dive going on down here. It looks like they were going for the Janna. Saw a lot happening up there, and they actually did know about the Karthus. Or at least there was watch out things. But while all that was going on, these guys decided to go for this. And there we go. The stun comes out immediately. And Janna actually goes down to an illusion. Illusion, gotta watch out though, because he's taking this tower. And in Tenpai trying to get out, out comes that blue thing though. And it actually is going to get vision. And then, unfortunately for Corky, ends up going down. And actually used this flash to try to escape. Did not manage to do it though, and he ends up going down. Blanc trying to make sure they don't get the blue. She goes straight for Shaco, lands the chains on him, and he's got to watch out. He does have Deceive, though, so he's able to get over the wall with no problem. And she was not able to prevent that. And now she's getting engaged on by the Kastin. She's trying to get to the Irelli over here. There we go, the chains, double chains comes out. Stuns the Kastin. In comes Jarvan as well. Irelli going for it. There's a slow onto the Kastin. He's going to try to finish off LeBlanc, but she jumps away. And now he's getting really low. There we go. Down he goes to the Irelia. And St. Vicious was actually following through on the off chance that Kasten was able to get over that wall. He wanted to be ready to go ahead and pop him up. So the Kasten was not able to do a thing to that LeBlanc. Because Kasten fed late game is definitely dangerous. Again, with this team, you can probably get shut down with some decent magic. But we'll see if that ends up happening. We definitely will. 
see how much magic I really actually didn't build magic there. nice flag and drag there by St. Vincent pops up the Karthus and there we go he goes down I'm kind of surprised by her decision to go jump into that I guess it's uh, okay because of her her lifesteal and into she was, able, she, was, she was fine either way, but still, I'm kind of surprised by her decision to do so. It looks like Cinder wanting to go for something here. Shaco's hanging out in the blue team jungle. Not really getting much done, though. Putting down jack-in-the-boxes to go ahead and get vision, I guess, and possibly do a little bit of damage to the jaguar walking through the jungle. But not really doing too much at the moment. And Aurelia is taking this opportunity to go ahead and shove this forward. Shoves it right into the tower. Karthus does not have Telly. Actually, neither does Aurelia. So, neither team's actually able to get out of that with... Okay, go back without having... missing something. Just kind of wondering how far Dragon went. I'm not sure what exactly these guys are doing. They're just kind of hanging out in this bush. If Jarvan comes this way, he's going to get hit by those boxes. There we go, Shaco going in. Jarvan kind of read it. Trying to get out, he flashes away, gets popped up by the Janna thing, but he's actually gonna be okay. In goes the LeBlanc, lands the change there onto oh, Ellen. I believe it's fake Shaco. It is fake Shaco, but they do manage to finish him off and get a 25 gold. In the meantime, Corky way out of position here, gets stunned by Syndra. Lucian Colby comes in, the calling does a lot of damage, and down he goes there. Death of fake Shaco again. And these guys are still just kind of hanging around here. Out comes a ward though from the blue team, and that's gonna chase these guys away. Syndra also, I believe, warding up here around the dragon, just making sure they don't steal that. I really like this, by the way. It's kind of pretty. Who knows where it goes, but it's really pretty. And the red team going for the little guy again. Syndra trying to force them away, actually grabs him, shunts him away. And it actually goes to the blue team there. So nicely done there by her, bringing it over to a position that Lucian would be able to help. Nice forcing away of that passing. Oh, Janna. Janna's just little bit of She got hit by the start. Syndra goes down, but she does a lot of damage to the Janna beforehand. Flash comes out from Lucian, fixing off. Down goes Cassidy as well. Lots of damage going on to the Shaco. Jarvan trying to finish this off. Not going to be able to do it though. So close, doesn't happen. LeBlanc now and Jarvan both here against the Corky. Nice flag and drag, that's a dead Corky. And that was a three for two. Oh, Shaco! Shaco comes in to even that up to a three for three. And Karthus actually got assists for a lot of skills because he ulted at the beginning of that. So that's gonna be great for him. Getting him a little bit of extra gold there, making things a little harder for Aurelia. But of course, soon enough, we'll probably see her build some sort of MR. He gets out of it. He gets out. So close. Uh, obviously, his decision to go in was because of the fact, really, it was because of the fact that he knew, he knows LeBlanc. LeBlanc just blew all of her cooldowns to go ahead and finish off. Why not go with that? And there we go. Irelia goes in. Lands the slow onto the Karthus. Karthus is ignited. He's going down. And she wasn't even forced to stick around in the defile because... She knew Ignite was going to finish him off, so she actually jumped away to him anyway. She's like, I'm done with you. We're done. No no reason to stick around. And amusingly, Karthus has Exhaust, which is not what I would expect at all. I don't know. We'll have to see how the, how the meta ends up evening out. I mean, used to, it was always Top Ghost Teleport. 100% almost Top Ghost Teleport. Now, I, I don't know if it's just sometimes, or if it's just this game, or what, but... Teleport's not an option in this game at all, and it looks like some of the options that were previously unthought of are actually showing up. Oh, Cinder going for that Janna. In goes the bomb as well. Gets popped up by the Janna. Tornado, but uh, goes down to the Cinder ulti. Now Kassin has to watch out because these two could probably do decent amount of damage. And in comes Jarvan as well. Cast and saw it and was able to get out of there. In the meantime, though, the Aurelia did manage to go ahead and take down this turret. And Corky not really able to retaliate with a tower killed on bottom because he doesn't know where anybody is. He's going to go ahead and head back. <laughs> there goes LeBlanc's ass in there. Not really going to be too big of a deal. And fake LeBlanc fronts all the way down here before dying. Shaco again, wanting to possibly go for this, but the little, I believe, wolf? I think that's the wolf spirit. Actually went ahead and saw him. So, no go for you. I actually hadn't seen these before, so that's kind of cool. I thought they actually looked like real wolves. 
but uh, apparently it's just a wolf spirit, not a spirit wolf. You know, I was kind of thinking like, like World of Warcraft. You've got the shaman spirit wolves. That's that's more or less what I was thinking, as opposed to just. I, I can kind of see it though. I mean, that that is how a lot of people represent spirits. Dive coming in here onto LeBlanc. She's forced to go ahead and flash over this wall. She's trying to get to her allies. She goes for Karthus. Lands the chain on him. Forced back though by the presence of Shaco. So she won't be able to finish him off. And now Karthus is going for this tower. It's getting pretty low. Fake LeBlanc doesn't go down, amusingly enough. So there is no gold for you. And mid tower does go down, but again, Aurelia up top doing work on this Karthus. She gets hit by the, the cube. She doesn't care. She's already seen. She's already shown. She's more than happy to tower dive, and she does exactly that. There flashes to get out because he did exhaust her. Not gonna be able to. Do not even close. Does some damage, but it's not enough to finish her off. And now she's going to go for this tower and do at least some damage to it. It's got that shield, so she's definitely got to do some damage past that. In comes the Janna going for the kill here. Shield comes out from Janna. A decent amount of damage was done by Aurelia. And Janna, of course, is not able to do much at all to it. Not, not able to finish the Aurelia off. Oh, that doesn't try. And this is a Dragon Ball. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's on the wrong side there. Oh, better watch out, Mr. Steal Your Buffs. Better watch out. Good job there by the red team, or blue team, securing that. Oh, man. Corky went for the kill on the Cinder there. Got it. But unfortunately, her hand was taken down by the Rooster Lucian, now trying to hide away from the Shaco. The Incomes Castle goes down to Lucian. That's all he's able to do. In goes the, the uh, Jarvan. Manages to finish off both Shaco and Janna. Wow. And then LeBlanc comes in for the cleanup kill on Fake Shaco. Nicely done there. <laughs> and it looks like Kassadin unfortunately has DC. Hopefully he'll be back soon. Game's, game's definitely not looking too good here for the red team as it is. I hope it wasn't a rage quit. Hopefully it was more of a DC that he will recover from. Because otherwise that would be very disappointing. I don't think... I don't know. There we go. He's back. So yeah, I was right. It, it, it was not a rage quit. It was just a DC. But we do have the blue team pushing forward in the mid lane, wanting to go ahead and retaliate that earlier tower kill with a tower kill of their own. And it's already going down pretty low. Janna shielded it up, but she's not even shielded up enough. It's melting pretty fast. It's down to about half, but it looks like the LeBlanc and Super Combo are actually thinking about possibly going for this blue buff. And here we go. Nice job by Cinder. Pulls that guy right over. And who got it? LeBlanc got it. Very nice. That is such a mean ability. So like, yeah, you have this blue buff? It's mine. You got the little guy? It's mine. I've been doing that very well this game. This supports Cinder, man. You gotta watch out for her. Aurelia's hanging around down here. The Jarvan's hanging around down here. They're actually counter jungling Shaco, which obviously not gonna make him very happy. And they're hiding out of this place. Gonna go ahead and get rid of the pink ward and stun up the Janna in the meantime, but she gets shielded by the tower. A lot of people complained about that tower so far. Not liking the way it shields you quite so much there. Watch out, gotta watch out. This tower is getting lower and lower. Lucian's just poking at it here while the rest of his team keeps these guys occupied. Little Blanc just jumping over to check here. And the next wave may end up finishing off this tower. We have Lucian. Cindra and LeBlanc all hanging around here. They want this tower. They're gonna clear out the wave almost instantly, of course. And then they just have to shove it forward. They'll probably be able to get the tower. There's really not much DC you can do. Quirky has some way to it, but not nearly enough. We'll take a look up there in a moment. But yeah, they're gonna get this tower for sure. And now we can go ahead and see what's happening up here. Looks like the Aurelia and Jarvan both going for the Shaco and Karthus combo. Aurelia gets popped up by Janna. That's what happened there. And she ends up going down to Karthus. Now Jarvan is coming out. Gets punted out of his flag and drag by a savior Janna ult, which puts him in good position as is, but he knows he's not going to escape. So he goes ahead, ults them, and stands up going down. 
so much in that save again. But ooh, Cassidy got caught out of position there. Out comes the card to solve the doing some damage, forcing him back. Flash comes out from Chunky Trash to get him out of here. And Lucian steals that red buff. But in goes the Cassidy for the kill and gets control of that red buff right back again. Corky gets distracted in his quest to slay the mighty Cinder by a, a poor little guy who is running away. Rip. Huge minion weave down here, which is great for Shaco. Shaco's gonna be able to grab that, clean it up really fast. Corky versus Cinder. Cinder goes down again. She was a little far out here, given how low she was. She was the price for it. Another tower goes down here to the red team. They're starting to turn this around. In goes Aurelia, though. Gets the slow on cast, and he flashes out. Jumps again, but honestly, I can't see him escaping this. She's a little faster than he is. She's going to jump right to him. You're dead. There we go. Jumps right to him. Now, is she going to go for the card that he flashes beforehand? She's still going for it, and she actually is going to be able to finish him off. Gets pumped up with the Janna under the tower, though. She's taking a lot of damage. She's still alive. Corky hanging around here as well. He has to watch out because she could probably one-shot him. So she's going to go under the tower and end up going down there. So ends up being a two-for-one, which is definitely worth it. And in the meantime, LeBlanc shoved this up into the tower. So this tower will possibly take a little bit of damage. Not too much at the moment, though. Shaco's hanging out in this bush. She's trying to avoid these guys. He's got to watch out. They're pretty dangerous. And Cinder's over here clearing out wards as well. There we go. Now they see Shaco. And Lucian going for the... Helping out the Jarvan here by going for the big frog guy. I don't remember what he's called. Bit of a multi-pronged shove here. They're just keeping pretty much all lanes except top shove. And that's probably something they actually do want to think about doing as well. Because that top lane is shoved pretty far in their direction. But a minion wave just co collapsed here. And there's actually more more blue minions than red minions, I believe. And I really is on her way to go help it anyway. Dragon coming up pretty soon. We do see the pings coming out here from the blue team. And the culling comes out. Not able to finish off the Corky. Flash comes out from Corky as well to go ahead and keep him alive. And he will indeed stay alive. It looks like these guys wanted to come down here for a gank. Probably not going to end up happening. They may just be trying to get control so they can go for the dragon. Or at least get vision of the dragon with the It looks like they will indeed end up getting him. Yep, down he goes. Dragon up in seven seconds. Lucian way out of position here, along with Syndra. That may be a free dragon for the red team here. With his bot lane gone, there's not much that the blue team's going to be able to do for the dragon. These guys were way too overextended, considering the fact that the dragon is coming up right now. Aurelia's is going to try to offset it by getting this tower, and she will succeed. But dragon's huge. Dragon is a huge thing. And... Yeah, that, that was just a, a very severe misplay there by the blue team bot lane. If these guys can get another tower off of it, it might make it worth it. And they are trying. They're rushing for that mid tower and changing their mind, actually, and not rushing for that mid tower. So, no, they're going to get the top tower. I don't know. I feel like it is probably not worth it, but at the same time, they do already have a buff of their own. So, that's just equalizing this. So... In this case, they're now equal in buffs, and they've got more gold thanks to the tower kill, so it may actually end up being okay. Probably isn't. But it, it's still it's somewhat painful, and they've only got slightly more gold. They really do. They only have slightly more gold than they gave up that dragon opportunity. But I mean, even... There's really nothing they can do about it by that time. Once the bot lane messed that up, just, just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Just a little bit of a mess up. Once it's done, though, it, it's gone. There's really no no going back from that. There's nothing driving to do. You can try to steal it. Probably just only get the other way. There we go. Janna goes down. Aurelia goes straight for her. Stun comes out from Cinder. The calling lands there onto the Kasten. Flash and the ultimate there from Jarvan. Corky, Kasten, and Janna all taken down in an instant. And that's going to give the blue team this tower and possibly the inhibitor tower. Shaco not going to be able to stop this. Arthas would be able to, but he's way the heck up there. He's not going to be able to get here in time to prevent this. Shaco goes in, up in the card. Holy Shaco melts instantly, and this inhibitor is dead. Karthus is not going to be able to do a thing, and the blue team backs off with that inhib kill. Two towers and an inhib off of three kills. Very nice. 
Very nice indeed. No blue buff for you, though. Gonna right, get the pink boy, though. Gonna get the pink boy. And let's see if they, how much, yeah. Let's see. Magic resist. Magic resist. Magic resist? No. No magic resist here yet. But there is an Aegis of the Legion coming along, which gives magic resist to all the people. They're working pretty hard on that quest to go ahead and just shut down this team. They are already reducing so much damage because of that. And it's only going to get worse here for the red team. Only going to get worse. Morelia getting engaged on here by Karthus. He's able to jump out of this. In comes the Jarvan and the Syndra. These guys have to watch out. Aurelia's coming around. She may go for that Kassadin. By Kassadin, I mean uh, Karthus. Sides against it, though. And just forces them away from her allies. Blue team pink and fair. I don't see them going for it. Now, they're going to jump over the wall here. And they didn't get seen by that. So the red team knows some of them are here. They don't know how many, though. And it looks like the red team's wanting to bait this Baron. But with this guy here, I mean, there's really no bait. From the red team. Yeah, they see LeBlanc. They can't see anything but LeBlanc, but they see LeBlanc using those spells. And the blue team was able to burst Baron down so very fast that it doesn't matter anyway. There was no time for the red team to react. There's a lot of damage really fast to be able to take Baron down very fast. And that right there is going to be a huge, huge thing for the blue team. Now look at the minions. I mean, they're so very big. I'm gonna go ahead and leave them be for now, though. This does lower them, but it is a super minion, and it, they've got super minions coming in. Fake Shaco. Real Shaco. Real Shaco says, hey yo, and in goes the Lucian. That's a dead real Shaco. Oh! He goes ahead and deceives out of this. He's in this bush. Is he going to give out? I don't believe so. Lucian actually auto attacks into the bush and gets those auto attacks off before getting feared. But something terrible happened over here. What are you doing? Alright. Aurelia was chasing the cast and nope, nope. Sees Karthus, goes for him. Gets him slow. I'm guessing he flashes over the wall. There we go. Flashes over the wall. She flashes over to get him. And managed to finish him off. But now she just took a lot of damage between him and Corky. Ends up being giving that kill. Then Cinder was coming to help. Tries to flash away. Doesn't end up happening. She gets slowed by the Cassidy, and now she ends up going down. That ended up being a two for two overall. Not terrible, but definitely not what you would really hope for when you have Baron buff, because now these guys aren't going to do too much in the way of shoving. They'll be able to do stuff, because I mean, it is still a three versus three. But they're going to be forced to redo here a little bit, and after that, they'll probably go ahead and shove. We did just see them ping this bot tower, and we likely going to see them go for that, especially since they have such a huge wave here. That is a great target for them to go to. Because, I mean, they've got nothing to push. push man. There's really no reason to go there. So they might as well go for this bot tower. Corky's hanging around here. He's going to get forced back by the fact that Lucian's there. He's going to pick up by the other guy. And there we go. Lucian is here to go ahead and shove this out with them. Out comes that Baron buff, buffing all those minions. The block going for the kill on Corky. And not going to get it, but in comes Jarvan, who also does not get it. LeBlanc goes down, Jarvan gets nothing, but this minion wave is going up, and it is a huge minion wave of epic doom. There we go. Out comes that damage there from Lucian. In comes that minion wave going for this tower. It is melting fast. Look at just how Lucian is tearing it down. Out comes the Karthus Ulti. Looks like we had an engage over here. What's going on here? Syndra way out of position going for this red the pink ward really not in her best interest there Shaco comes around and yeah she goes down there actually goes down to the Shaco yeah uh, sorry Karthus but in the meantime the blue team is just shoving down this bot lane not gonna be able to shove any further there are three here and these guys need to watch about getting la collapsed on because Shaco is on his way over but they still got a tower off of that and Aurelia is also shoving top these guys are going for kills here on Lucian and Jarvan. Not getting them either. Shaco getting really low. He's one shot. There we go. Down he goes. Down Janna goes. Shaco and Lucian doing work. Karthus trying to finish off the Lucian. Down he goes. And Jarvan's able to finish off Corky. Lucian survives. 
The Irelia is going for this tower and goes for the cast and finishes the cast in. That's an ace. That's a dead tower here in the top lane. Gonna be a dead tower in the bot lane as well. Almost definitely. Doubt it'll end up being the game. But they definitely got the tower being in. And at least one more tower, probably in another end game as well. And there we go. Janna up in one. Janna's up now. The Shaper's up in two. Lucian is back up to full health thanks to lifesteal. Janna tries to save this tower. It's gonna go down before Shaper's in too much at all. There we go. They're going for that Janna. She gets to go down. She goes. One tower down. Second tower getting hit hard. It goes down. That's gonna be the game. There we go. Karthus goes down as well. He is going to summon away of the Rupile. Shaco is going to work here but gets melted by the Syndra. The Irelia going to the cast and gets the stun off on him. He jumps away. She's going to get the kill as soon as she jumps in. There we go. Triple kill for Lucian. And that is indeed going to be the game because that was an ace. Nice. Very nicely played there with the ace. Kept these guys on the defense of the whole game, and that is going to be the end of this game. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Bye.